Um, we will get started here as people still join in. I will share my screen, but this is the third of four listening sessions uh, with the, the ARM program about the, the radars. This one is gonna be the North Slope of Alaska. And Scott, since I see you, are you able to see the screen and hear me okay? Yes, Adam, I am. All right. So um, really just a, a broad overview of, of why we're here. What are our goals? Um, and really we want to define the scientific priorities for the radars at the North Slope of Alaska. Um, we want to look at what would be done, not what could be done. So what are the needs right now from the science community um, in your research? And any additional information we can, we can garner on seasonality, um, number of cases required strategies, that's, that's all a bonus. Um, we also want to look at what's needed to do the science. Are there any barriers? Um, you know, do we need additional data products or are there other things getting in the way of uh, this data being useful? Is it uh, volume of data, quality of data, that sort of thing? Um, but before we dive into the discussion, um, I do want to um, just give you a broad overview of the NSA site. So our radars there, we have an X-band uh, precipitation radar that we call the X-Sapper, uh, located on the the Barrow Arctic Research Center. Uh, there's a second generation KAW SACR um, that's installed at the main site, along with a Kaser, which is our vertically pointing KA band radar, which I don't have pictured here. Now, uh, the specifications for those are, are listed in this table. I'm not going to go through all of it. The X Sapper um, or the X band precipitation radar is one degree beam width, um, 9.3 to 9.35 to 9.45 gigahertz uh, frequency. It's dual pole. Um, and then the KAW Sacker, uh, 0.32 uh, degree beam width for both when they're matched. Uh, the W Sacker is 0.18 when it's not matched. Um, but I'll, I'll just uh, leave it at that with these. They're, they're all dual pole. Um, and, and some of these frequencies are tunable. Um, but again, a big thanks to uh, Todd for providing the Sacker information here. I know he was digging through some, some manuals for me to, to gather that information. Um, now, the somewhat layout here is that the X-band precipitation radar, where it's mounted, is about uh, 1.85 kilometers away from our central facility where we have that scanning cloud radar and the vertically pointing K's, KA Zenith radar. Um, we also have, you know, the normal suite of ARM instruments at this main site. Um, so Doppler LiDAR, Micropulse LiDAR, Salometer, we have a 40 meter tower, um, the ARI, MWR, et cetera, that sort of thing. We also have a, a suite of instrumentation geared towards um, measuring solid precipitation. So we have a multi-angle snowflake camera. We have two laser precipitation monitors deployed there, uh, two solid particle mass flux sensors or the flow caps. And then we have an array of nine ranging sensors, ultrasonic and sonic um, at the site as well. Additionally, with our MET system, there's a present weather detector and a, um, we have a camera up there as well that's, that's focused on the precipitation measurements. Now, uh, coming later this year in August, we are planning to stand up and install what is known as NSA E12. So this is an extended facility um, that's gonna house a lot of the solid precipitation instruments that came from the AMF3 when it was deployed at Aliktok Point. Um, so we're gonna be moving these somewhat more inland, um, but again, it'll have two laser precipitation monitors, uh, nine sonic ranging sensors, a gene or rain bucket, uh, surface meteorology, uh, which is going to come from what is now our MOZ system up at the, the main site, and we'll have a camera out there as well. Now, we're starting with just this base instrumentation there. Um, you know, we do expect that there will be requests um, as we go forward, but really this is just to stand up the, the initial site more inland um, based off of mentor recommendations, um, you know, from their observations of gradients as you kind of come inland from the coast. Um, additionally, one thing I don't have shown on the map here is the um, 
NOAA baseline observatory, they also have a GNOR weighing bucket among other instrumentation as well um, that is available. So that's our, our general layout. Now, uh, with the data products, the data that's available, um, this is you know, similar to, to other sites. Our ARSCL data products are uh, some of the most extensive uh, records for the radars. So uh, going back to when we had our MMCR, as we called it, um, so 1998 onward through current, we have this Kaser ARSCL product. Um, and I will say, if you want to know more about these data products, please check out ARM's website. Uh, you can search for these and, and find the tech reports, find the details of what all goes into these products as well. Um, additionally, we have a Kaser corrected uh, data product or Kaser core. Um, recently, the corrected moments in antenna coordinates was released for the XSAPR, the X-band precipitation radar. Um, this date range uh, was around the uh, mosaic uh, timeframe, I believe, in support of that campaign. And then we also have a couple of evaluation products available here as well, MicroOSCOL and Radar CFAB. And again, please check out the website if you do want more information about those products. So with that, I will just you know, uh, leave it for, are there any questions on NSA, on the existing instrumentation, um, or the, the layout uh, that, that we have? And feel free to raise your hand or add a comment in the chat super quickly adam that by the way that eat the, that new extended facility is going to be fantastic now was there a laser distrometer going in there yeah so the, the laser precipitation monitor is um what we've been using for the laser distrometer in the arctic environment so uh similar to the parsifal uh, and there's a there's a gnr there going as well Right, yes. that's fantastic. We've just been starting to look at comparisons between the GNR and laser distrometer and sail, and it looks like a really good pair of instruments to have. And the distance from the radar is fantastic. What we what we'll probably need to do is go back and look at some of our old data and to see how much clutter that's in. Hopefully, it's away from mm -hmm. some of that steam piping and infrastructure in and around there that pops up so bright on our radar images. But really good news. Yep. And um, I should say that the, the site is actually going to be going where there's existing infrastructure at um, the Environmental Observatory, I believe it's called. Um, so there will be existing infrastructure there um, as well. So so if there's not any more questions on the actual infrastructure and, and the layout, I do want to pose some questions to this group and, and Michelle's gonna help me with some poll questions here. Um, so just to get a general idea of the users on this call. Um, so if, if we can throw up the first poll question, which um, is geared around what data have you used from the NSA site in your research, in your research I should say. And we'll give that a minute to for everyone to respond. Um, we really want to see what what your interests are here. And once we have those results, we can share those on the screen. I know people are probably still entering in, but. Okay, so a broad majority have used the Kaser before our vertically pointing KA band, but we also have 21% um, for the XSAPR and the SACR uh, as well. Okay, so that's good. So next we'll go into the second question to um, look at what are your current needs? Uh, you know, do you have needs for NSA radar data in your current research? We really want to look at, you know, what could be done again, not what would be done, you know, five years from now if you had the, the research funds to do so.
And again, we'll give this a minute and then um, we'll get the results displayed and then we'll move into the discussion. Okay, so majority, as I would expect, do have have current needs for this data. So let's um, let's dive into the discussion here then. And, and I know um, with our SGP session, um, you know, if if we don't get people talking initially, I will start to call on people. So um, you know, first I, I want to hear from the group here. What what are your top scientific priorities? What do you see as the top priorities for these radars? Is it microphysics? Is it spatial distribution of precipitation? Um, you know, what's a higher priority? And feel free to to raise your hand, um, put in the chat. Um, and I'll maybe maybe look to uh, Christopher Williams or or Sergey. for some first comments maybe to get a discussion going. Yeah, this is Sergey. Uh, I'm planning to use and still using uh, the data from NSA radar measurements from microphysical studies. Mm -hmm. And as to soccer, I mostly used when it was deployed at the Wadekto Point facility haven't used it yet it is new location at NSA but planning to so I'm okay. interested in the polarimetric radar measurements from SACR and uh, from also for Kaiser in combination with SACR for multi-wavelengths uh, radar measurements for microphysical studies okay are you using anything from the precip radar at all yeah, X band. I mean, the combination of X band radar and SACA frequency radar gotcha. for the dual wavelengths measurements. I was also tried to use uh, X band radar measurements uh, for habit retrievals, though it's been uh, quite a while ago. And uh, I noticed that I and I was uh, in a discussion with other people like uh, uh, Scott and others uh, that there are some issues. It, at least it, there used to be issues with the X band polarimetric uh, variables uh, like uh, rho HV, for example. Okay. Uh, but as I said, I haven't use this data for a while. Maybe it's already fixed, maybe not, but uh, there were some issues, not in the calibration sense of the uh, absolute calibration, but in the uh, purity of the polarimetric variables, specifically rho HV. Okay. That's good to know. So, um... And also, I just wanted to mention, uh, Adam, can you share with the group uh, the first few view graphs of your presentation, which shows uh, all the instrumentation at NSA site? So it's kind of convenient reference would be for, I yeah. believe, not only yep. for me, but for others too. Yeah, yeah. Those. so we, we can definitely go back to this. and. No, 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 um, not to show, but share with, uh, you know, to send the link. Or make oh, the yeah. slides available. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we will make the slides available after after this call. We'll have um, they'll be up on Arms Document Repository, and we'll work um, to get these out after the call here. So, yeah, if you can send the link by email, so we can reach mm -hmm. those. Yep. Um, and and you should be able to see the the full list of instrumentation at the NSA site on Arms website as well. Um, so. Uh, Thank you, Sergey, for for that. Um, anyone else that's using the data? What you know? What are the the prime uh, scientific priorities here that that you're using it for? Um, you know, it sounds like microphysics with 
the X band for multi wavelength um, is useful. Um, sounds like there's some barriers in the, the X zapper data. Um, Very briefly, I'll end. Two fun things we've been doing the recent um, uh, climate simulator work that was led by Israel Silba, uh, Silba and Bobby and Anne Fridlin. We look, we use the case very uh, heavily to compare with NASA's uh, E3 model um, for looking at mixed phase things. And this is a wonderful place in the world to do it. We also did a really fun project with a summer student, uh, I want to say two summers ago, where we used optical flow to actually track the sea ice that is really apparent and visible on the X Sapper data. Okay. So I guess I'd look for, for others out there. Um, well, this the is call. Sergey again. I just forgot yeah. to mention uh, that I've been using the Kaiser uh, data for uh, testing the snowfall retrievals techniques. Uh, and I was comparing the Kaiser retrieved, Kaiser based retrievals of snowfall rates with uh, uh, no baseline general gauge data. Mm -hmm. So this is another okay. use. Okay, great. Yes, um, Lu Lin. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, actually, uh, in our current work, we actually focus more on the uh, combo uh, experiment data, but mm -hmm. we understand that the co-air outbreak when the uh, signal actually propagating to, uh, to the inland, it's actually very far-fetched. So in the, uh, in the NSA, we are able to identify these shorter fetch coir outbreak signals uh, based on the uh, historical data. So we mostly uh, use these XARP and, and KZER to look at first the phenomenal and the morphology of the cloud uh, in the shorter fetch coir outbreak, try to kind of uh, bridge the gap that, uh, that we only have these uh, far fetch signal from the, uh, from the enemy site. So that's uh, one uh, useful information we would like to uh, uh, definitely collect. And the case part, we also want to definitely look at the mixed phase and the, uh, and the microphysics uh, uh, in that regard. So comparing to our uh, detailed simulation and LES modeling. So those are the very useful and especially the long-term data set would be helpful for us for statistical kind of uh, evaluation, so. Okay. So in the more long-term records. Jim. Yeah, a follow-up question for Sergey, and I guess this could go out more generally as well. For the microphysical applications, I know there are there's value in the, the scanning to get at habit information. I know there's also um, value in having the multiple wavelengths. I guess the question I have is whether it's important to have the scanning at multiple wavelengths or real or whether um, it would meet the needs for microphysical investigation to have a multiple wavelengths in the vertical and scanning at only a single wavelength. Um, could, could you comment on that or could somebody comment on that? Yeah, since uh, uh, we have uh, the scanning radars and some of the time they are uh, pointing vertically, so we have both. But uh, also, uh, having the low elevation angle measurements and vertically pointing measurements, uh, there is uh, some differences in application to the multi-wavelength uh, radio techniques. For example, when you look at the uh, low elevation angle uh, measurements and for example, dual wavelength ratio, like, like for example, W band and uh, X band, then your dual wavelength uh, signal is less susceptible to the particle orientations and particle uh, habits if you are after, for example, retrieving the particle size. So there is a difference uh, between different pointings. And I would say, uh, since we have scanning radars, we can get uh, some measurements, uh, some time devoted to the slow level, uh, low elevation angle measurements, and some of, of vertical. And uh, since X band is 
some distance away, 1.85 kilometers away from the sucker, the vertically pointing measurements would not be uh, exactly collocated, but RHI, X-band RHI to the sucker can be used to reconstruct the profile over the sucker radar. So we will have the three, uh, we can have three frequency measurements uh, at the sucker site using the vertically pointing sucker measurements and RHI scanning of, uh, from X sucker. I don't know, Jim, if it answers your question, but there are some thoughts. Um, yeah, that, yeah, thank you, Sergey. And there were also some good comments in the chat, so I think that's helpful. Yeah. Um, okay, so that answers Scott G's question. Um, you know, I would, you know, we've talked a lot about microphysics. I guess I would look to others on the call here um, about other priorities you would see with these radars. Um, you know, whether it's, I mean, do we need this for spatial distribution of precipitation? Do we need it for um, modeling? Uh, what are some other uses here that, that we could define? Maybe I can uh, add one other uh, perspective uh, related to clouds and precipitation. That is that a, a scanning radar, uh, especially a low attenuation scanning radar with sufficient range, provides information on horizontal cloud structure, which matters especially in this uh, coastal environment. Um, that provides context to the vertical profile information. <clears throat> okay. So would, um, you know, we have the, the precipitation measurements that are going to be going in more inland. Um, are there any thoughts about how that will benefit uh, your research or what you would like to also see there? So uh, Scott G, I'm, I'm looking at your comment here um, in the chat. Do you just wanna? Well, I, since Sergey was suggesting the RHI scan, I guess the question is, is it, maybe, maybe I missed it in a slide, but do you, I mean, do you have a set scanning mode that is run that you're happy with? And then to Sergey's content, if you think the vertically pointing measurements at the site with the, say the SACR is, are important, then would you separately be suggesting a change to the, the the X sappers scanning relative to providing more or less RHIs over the site. I mean, I think part of the reason to hold the discussion is how should these be operated too? And so yeah. is there, is everyone satisfied? Does anyone even know how the radar is being operated there vis-a-vis, -vis, is there a change to operations that would be preferable? Yeah. Um, so we, we have operated the, the NSA one, and I'll look um, if Alyssa has more information on the actual strategy, but it has been an alternation, I believe, of PPIs and RHIs. Now, the actual layout of that, I think we've, we've adjusted that in the past, um, depending on needs as well. So, um, you know, if there are needs to do more RHIs over the site, um, you know, I think that's what we're looking at, at trying to get at. So it sounds like, you know, the, the long-term record, the, the microphysics are really the, the top priorities um, for these radars, right? Um, I, I will ask, you know, is, you know, I, you know, what's the higher priority from the radars? Say we, we have both operational one, or say they're both down, um, which one's more important to get it up? And running is it the the sacker um, most likely I would believe, but I would look to to this community here. Um, oh, Jim, is your hand still up? Okay. 
so, you know, if we could only operate one of these radars um, for a time being, what, what would that be? If we had to make the decision, is it the, the SACR or the X-Band? If it's one or the other, I would say SACR. Okay. Are there any other thoughts on that? Given that Kazar is available all the time. <laughs> Just yeah. a thought though, yeah. that if, if we weren't to run the, the, the SAPA, we would want to run, we want to revisit the mode the SACA is run in. Uh, just to um, Bart's earlier point on uh, wanting to get the spatial context of the clouds. Plus, again, you know, I also like to that low level tilt to look at the CI state as well. Okay. Uh, can I ask a question also? Yeah. Uh, this is Sergey again. Uh, I'm wondering uh, the, as far as I know, the for the X supper, there are some RHI scans towards the soccer. Are there? I haven't yet used soccer data at NSA as I mentioned, but I used it uh, for Molik talk. But are there RHI scans towards the supper from soccer location? Andre, I see you're on the call. Do you want to provide some information on, on the SACR? I know we haven't actually had the SACR running um, in a little while here. So for the SACR, uh, we can set up the RHI scans and with the SAPR, we scan over the SACR. I remember that they were set up, so I didn't check for a long time. The sapper is down, the sacker is down. So I don't remember exactly what was the last scans, but it's no problem to set up the scans if it's requested and a scientific reason for it, we will be happy to set up. So yeah, before the good. winter, we will put back together all the radars in a NSA. So before the winter, they will become operational. Thanks, Andre. When the soccer was at Olik Talk, uh, the RHI scans were uh, set at the you know nose, uh, like uh, zero azimuth 45, 90, 135, 180. Uh, but there were no other radars at the Oleg Talk point. But if you have a, a, you know, at NSA, you have an X supper. So if the scanning procedure was retained from Oleg Talk point, I would suggest adding uh, some regular RHI scans to the supper, X supper. Mm -hmm. Targa, if you are using the NSA data, just make the proposal or the scan strategy and we can discuss it and we will be happy to do the modification for the sacker. Okay. So I, I guess I'd look to, to others on this, this call as well, um, you know, on thoughts, ideas for these radars. Um, Christopher, I'm going to pick on you since you're you're on these. Um, do you have any any other thoughts on on these operations wise or or? So this is Christopher, and you can hear me, right? Yep, we can hear. You. Um, yeah. So from my research area has been using the Kaser and looking vertically and estimating the vertical air motion above the mixed phase clouds or identify the multiple peaks in the spectra to identify the liquid and frozen particles in the mixed phase. So I've been focused on the Kaser. Um, and I, I was a couple minutes late getting on. So is SACR not running now? And I'm on data discovery and I can't find any data yep. from 2019 since 2019. So the both scanning radars. Off. Yep. 
both scanning radars are down at the moment. Um, Andre and his team have been uh, planning for a trip up there at some point um, later this spring slash summer. I think it will be when things align. Um, they've already had a lot of trips in, in the works to Houston and now ENA as well. Um, yeah. But the plan is, as Andre said, to get the scanning radars up and running for the winter. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to mention it's the KA SACRA 2 now and W SACRA 2 that is there. So, yeah, there actually was some data from 2020 into 21 yep. for the KA SACRA mm -hmm. 2. It just, you have to put the 2 in there to see it. In oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's those little details. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I guess, how about, you know, one thing to think about too is, is when we operate these systems, um, it's definitely harder to perform maintenance troubleshooting in the winter, especially with the sacker, um, you know, with it being exposed. So I would, you know, look to this group to see, uh, we'll put up the, the third poll question here, you know, what season, um, if you had to pick one season to operate these systems, what would the preference be? Is it the transition seasons? Is it the winter? Um, you know, if you had your choice, what would it be? So we'll give that a minute. Um, you know, as part of this, we're, we're really trying to prioritize uh, when, uh, you know, we, we operate these systems. Every radar that we have operational is, is definitely a, adds significant effort uh, to our infrastructure team, our mentor teams. Um, so if we can prioritize when and how we run these, uh, that would definitely be valuable. So if we have the results here, so, okay. So it looks like the majority is winter, but there is um, the fall season. So I guess, you know, for those that um, with, with votes for summer and spring, I guess I would like to hear uh, the reasoning for each of these, um, you know, for those that, that voted for uh, fall, let's start there. Maybe I can allow, elaborate on this. This is Bart Gertz. Um, this is a, an interesting period uh, from the perspective of the clouds that Poole and Sue mentioned, uh, more convective clouds that uh, occur when there's still some open water offshore, um, you know, before the ice encroaches upon the uh, Chukli and Barren Seas, I guess, or um, basically there is no more open water of significant size to the north. And so as long as there's some open water in the fall, you can have these colder outbreaks at a relatively short fetch that produce um, interesting um, mixed phase clouds. Okay. Any other, other ideas on the, the fall time frame? Yes, so it's easy to do maintenance in summertime in Barrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, yep. so usually I've been there in in uh, August, September before there was open waters here and uh, yeah, so I think that it's a fall and transition on the winter, we can operate the radars. Winter times it's really, really hard to do any maintenance mm -hmm. on the sacker and it's hard to get there. So if we are maintaining those radars during the summer period, we can have good measurements and fall and part of the winter, or maybe they will survive for the Arctic winter and we will have them operational by spring, but usually that not happened before. So okay. that weather is, <laughs> yeah. So, so I guess those, oh, go ahead, Scott. Quick question for uh, Andre. Um, does that count for the X Sapper as well? Do you think the X Sapper is an easier radar to maintain operationality over the winter? Yes, 
we can maintain the x separ. The x separ may be the problem. So uh, if so very strange things. So maybe when the dual line radar or other mm -hmm. radars are operating uh, in the area temporary, we can uh, lose uh, the x separ. Right. But otherwise, uh, it's something it's happening for days or weeks. We cannot turn it off. I leave it there and I'm going back after a couple of weeks, check what this radar is doing and it's operating again fine and no problem with it. So I don't know what happened last time with it and uh, we just right. lost it. So it may be but a nice comp. Sorry. If we can make it to barrel the X upper, it's easiest to maintain than the sacker. It might be a nice compromise. Uh, there between the two systems, again, with the idea of needing to provide special context. Uh, so we will rework the W band radars for microphysics, the K band. So I hope that the SACR, we can make it to work, but that is a water cooled system and uh, we cannot do use distilled water, the pressure in the system because we are using uh, uh, coolant, the propylene glycol, it's becoming very viscous, so the pressure in the system, it's uh, high, so it's a really bad design problem, but we cannot run the radar without cooling system, so winter time to operate uh, the sucker will create some problems for us. Okay, Ed, I see your hand up. Yeah, hi there. I uh, just wanted to uh, put in some input regarding the, the fall season as well, and I second that. Uh, I mean, I agree, first of all, with Bart about the availability of, um, of water from the open fetch. Um, our recent uh, secondary ice study um, focused on, on the, the, the warmer uh, secondary ice regimes, and uh, fall is really the... Uh, the best time for that. Um, it's so darn cold in the winter that uh, uh, you know it. We don't. We don't. You know. We don't see even uh, much halit mossop uh, type uh, uh, warmer temperatures. So uh, that's that's my two cents. Okay. So I guess I would look to those that that voted for spring and summer, what are we missing then if we only operate the sacker uh, in the fall and the X sapper in the fall and winter or something along those lines? Um, you know, what are we missing from the spring summer time frames? Um, could I just jump back in? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think, I think you want to have the spring as well as the fall for, for, for the contrast. Uh, between the um, open water and um, solid, of right for both systems, or for is the sacker? Uh... Okay, uh, well, um, uh, my work is is you know very much uh, Kaiser oriented, so mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, for the the scanning. Um, for the scanning radars, then for the the spring summer time frame, for those that voted um, for those, are there any thoughts on what we would be missing in those time frames of of interest too with the scanning radars? You know, I should note that that our goal is to run the Kaiser. Um, you know, it is our workhorse radar system, so. Having it fully operational all year round is is always our goal with that system. Um, okay, I'm not getting any, and I can't call on anyone because I didn't see who who voted for what. But um, so would would there be any oppositions then if if you know we did what Andre was noting, um, prepare the radars in the the summer run the sacker for the fall season. Once it we get towards towards winter more, we, we turn the sacker off. Um, 
No, no, it's a confusion. Oh. We will keep the. We don't. We, I want to keep the radars for season. So I, but if it's something happens with the sucker during the winter mm -hmm. time, it's just hard to fix it. So yeah. that's why I suggested let's uh, we can get there summer time. We will prepare the radar. We will try our best, and the radar will probably work properly this whole year, but if something happens with the sucker, we cannot access it until the next spring mm -hmm. or next summer. So it's, we don't want to make just season operating this radar. So we want to keep it yeah. them for all, all year around operating. Yeah. But I guess, does that cause issues with the hardware, Andre, if we can avoid operating until failure, um, you know, are there some significant failures where we're maybe potentially going to deal with? Uh, we like to keep the radar parts. If it's a failure, we just, the other parts, we are, uh, we try to keep running until we can. So not this is the case when we remove the radar units from the, the enclosures and they are at PNNL. So, but mm -hmm. when they are in the field, if something happens with the W band, we still try to operate the K or vice versa. Or if the transmitter is up, we will operate our other circuits, we'll keep them powered. So, it's best for the electronics if it's powered than sitting there in minus 20, 30 degrees. That it's the worst case for the for the radar hardware. Yep. Okay. Scott, did I see your hand up? Yeah. Um, and by the way, this, this comment is uh, naive to the issues involved. I'm, I'm very familiar with the issues involved with the radar. So I appreciate what Andre is saying. This is purely from a science point of view. I mean, I was up in Utkiavik um, before the pandemic and we were, I think it was around the 20th of January. It was about minus 20 degrees didn't doesn't really matter what scale you use there and we had broken ice off the um the shore and it was kind of crazy because the the water vapor flux to there you could see it was incredible so you definitely do get those uh exchanges in winter now the climate's non-stationary and with arctic um amplification there's no better place to observe these changes than in utkiavik so if you take a long view here um, observing these changes in um, clouds, precipitation um, in winter with a scanning radar, um, that would be an amazing data set. And I, I know, and again, I said this is naive to the reality of the difficulty in keeping the radars up and running, but there's very much a case, and I'm one of the people who voted for winter for running, the, trying to run these systems in winter because uh, current winter in 10 years time, it's kind of more like fall. Okay, thanks Scott. Um, so are there, are there any others? I, I mean, now is, is your opportunity to, to voice your, your opinion on you know, what really will feed back into how we operate these systems uh, going forward. Um, you know, as, as much as we want to operate all our radars all the time. That's in reality, not the case. Uh, we are gonna have to set up priorities and make decisions on what to operate, when to operate potentially. Um, well, so it, this is Sergey. Uh, for yeah. the soccer, obviously uh, spring, winter and fall are more interesting than summer because uh, in summer you might have mostly rain at least near the surface and those all this fancy polarimetry uh, which will have in soccer measurements they are most useful for ice yep okay um So then would there, I guess, you know, we, we did have people vote for summer, for spring. Um, you know, if, if what we can do is, is uh, again, get out in the field in the summer, get them operational, pretty much run them until they fail. 
um, what what do we lose um, in that spring time, um, or is it not really an issue? If is gathering higher quality data um, better for this research? You know, even if it's just a few cases uh, a year versus having more data. You know, one thing we proposed uh, during the SGP session was having somewhat coordinated uh, IOP sessions in that, you know, we would essentially focus on uh, shorter term operations, making sure everything is up and running to the, the best of our ability, um, highly calibrated. Um, you know, would that be of interest at NSA or is it just better to, to go with, as Andre was noting, get it ready in the, the summer every year and then try and run it in, as long as we can? Scott. I just want to make one other point as well, Adam, uh, that's pertinent to what you're saying there, but also in contrast, to what we're talking about with SGP, there's nothing else up there. Um, the United States does not, actually most countries do not have, definitely not publicly accessible radar data that far north and in the presence of that sea ice regime there. I would argue, and now I'm going to really mess things up here, I would take that X-band scanning radar up there in uh, Utkiavik over any of the radar systems, any of the scanning radar systems, at least the sappers at SGP. I know we're talking about NSA mm -hmm. here, but in terms of the scientific value of that data, I think this data uh, is, is so very important to capture the full seasonality. And yes, I know I'm doing a thing that we all hate, which is I'm asking for everything, but um, mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I do not want to leave this session without underestimating the value and the under-observed nature of this region. That's a good point. So I know we're we're about uh, fifteen minutes to three o'clock. We plan this for an hour and a half, but um, you know we can definitely uh, call it early here. I do want to give everyone you know a chance to voice their thoughts on on how you know what's important about these radars to their research. Um, you know what they can use it for right now. Um, if we got them up and running this summer, like, like Andre's intending, um, you know, are there any remaining thoughts on these systems? Or, or Jim, I guess I'd, I'd ask you, are there any remaining questions you have um, that we didn't touch on? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I think you've covered quite a, you know, we go back and look at all these comments and the chat and the discussion. I think you've covered some, um, everything we've talked about, Adam, and I don't know what I would add at this point. Okay. So I guess I'll, I'll look to the broader group here. Is there anything else you want to add? If, if not, um, you know, just some, some final notes here. So we're going to be talking about ENA uh, in two weeks on April 13th uh, from 2 to 3.30, I believe. Um, so if you have interest in the ENA site, please join us for that. Um, you know, I'll be writing up a summary, essentially, from this, this meeting and posting the key takeaways on ARM's discourse page. So if you go to discourse.arm.gov, we have some radar topics there. Um, we already have one set up for NSA, and I will try and get the key takeaways in there um, you know, pretty quickly uh, in the next couple of days. Um, and then uh, you know, if, if there aren't any more comments or, or opinions on these radars, um, you know, I, I believe there will be a link for a survey here at the end of the breakout. So if there's nothing else, I, I appreciate everyone joining. Um, you know, if you have any follow-on questions or thoughts, you know, please reach out, uh, please talk in the discourse uh, forum. Uh, we look forward to, to kind of continuing the discussion a little bit there as well. All right, thanks everyone.